and aquatic food chain. This is a typical example of a terrestrial food chain. That is the food chain you find in land environments. We have the green plant or grass being eaten by a grasshopper. The grasshopper is the primary consumer eating the green plants. Then we have the lizard. The lizard is the secondary consumer eating the grasshopper. The snake is the tertiary consumer now eating the lizard. The orc eats the snake, then man eats the orc. So we want to look at what are the characteristics of a food chain. That is, what are those things that when you see, you can easily identify that this is a food chain. The first is that numerous plants, if the food chain has numerous plants and fewer larger animals at the apex. Numerous small plants, you have them at the base, while you have larger animals at the apex of the tropic, trophic level. That is, at the base, that, like for instance, in the example of the aquatic organism, we have green algae. So you have more green algae, numerous green algae. Why at the apex that you have the seagull? You have very few ones. That's an example of a food chain. The other thing you use in recognizing a food chain is that the number of consumer decreases at higher trophic level. As you go on in the food chain, as the chain increases, you discover that the consumer decreases or they reduce in number. So that's another example of the characteristics of a food chain. The next characteristic is that energy also decreases as the trophic level increases. So number decreases, energy level also decreases as you go higher in the food trophic level. The other characteristic of the food chain is that each link in the chain obtains energy by eating the one preceding it. And in turn, it is being eaten by the organism following it. Looking at the example of the terrestrial food chain, you have the green plants, you have the grasshopper, you have snake, you have hawk, you have man. So, the grasshopper eats the green grass, then man eats the snake. So, they eat each other. You find the one that is preceding. It obtains energy by eating the one that precedes it. Then the next one after it also eats it. So they, that's where they obtain their energy. Another characteristic of the food chain is that any food chain must have photosynthesis at the beginning and then decay at the end. So photosynthesis, you find them in autotrophic organisms. So, and from the examples of the food chain I've given you, you discover that we have green plants at the base, green grass, uh, green algae. So you have plants that undergo photosynthetic activity at the base. So that's a typical food chain. You cannot find a snake starting a food chain. No, it's always a green, a green plant that snaps, starts the chain or a photosynthetic organism or an, uh, an autotroph that starts the food chain. Then it ends by decay. So after you have all the eating and being eaten, you discover that the last organism will die, then decay will set in. They will decompose that organism so that another food chain can start by recycling. The decomposers recycle the nutrient for producers, the primary producers to start the chain again. Then another characteristic is that the shorter a food chain is, the more efficient it is. So when a food chain is very small, it will be very efficient because the energy that is lost is not so much as in when you have other, when you have a food chain that is so long and you begin to, do, to discover that energy is being lost seriously. So short food chain maximizes energy, so it reduces food wastage. Now we move on to what we call food web. What is a food web? A food web is an interlocking pattern of two or more food chains. When you have two food chains or more interlocking, that is intersecting, joining at a particular point, then you have what is called food web. So a food web is bigger than a food chain. It consists of two or more food chains that interlock or that 
intersect at a particular point. The food chains are interconnected with one another because most organisms consume more than one type of food. Even you, you don't eat one food, you don't just eat rice, you eat it with chicken. So you are not eating just plants, you eat animal, you eat fish, fish another day, you eat beans, so you eat all kinds of food. So that is why we have the interlocking chain pattern that happens. So it's not just food chain that snake will continue to eat grasshopper, no. Or um, man will continue to eat snake, only snake, no. Man will eat goats, he will come to eat cow another day, he will come to eat vegetable. So that is why sometimes in along along the food chain when there is eating and being eaten there, there comes a point that it interlocks you have you have food two food chains coming together at a particular point so that is why we have the food web the food web is also referred to as the food cycle that is the cycle of food this one eats this one then another eat this one then you find out that it keeps continuing like that in a circular manner because at the last side of the food chain, you have decay, and when decay sets in, they make food available. Decay make food available for plants nutrient. They will plant nutrients, and the chain can start all over again. That's why we call it the food cycle. The food web is also referred to as the food cycle. Look at this example of a terrestrial food web, and looking at it now, you find the gray grass being eaten by. The grasshopper. Then the lizard comes to eat the grasshopper. Then the orc eats the lizard. Now, rodents also eat green grass. Rodents also eat the grasshopper. Then snakes eat the lizard. So you have it interlocking. For rodents now, rodents eat green grass. It also eats the grasshopper. The rodents also eat the orc. Then the snake eats the lizard. So you have it interlocking. So you can see that this is like two or three food chains that you have here. The green grass, the grasshopper, the lizard. Then the rodents eating the, the orc. Then the snake. So you find this as an example of a terrestrial food web. Look at this also. An example of an aquatic food web. The green algae being eaten by the crustacea, then the dragonfly nymph, as the nymph stage of the dragonfly, eats the crustacea. Now, small fish comes to eat the, the nymph of the dragonfly, then large fish eats the dragonfly nymph, then shark eats the large fish. So you have and it's a working pattern of food chain. Though it's food chain, but it's more than one. And there is a point, a particular point, you can see the large fish and the dragonfly. That is a connecting point. Then the small fish and the dragonfly. That is a connecting point of these two food webs. The, of these two food chains. So you have a food web in the aquatic section. So this is an example of an aquatic food web. We move on to talk about ecological pyramids. What are ecological pyramids? They are graphical representation based on number of individual organs, the total dry weight, and the energy of the organisms. So a graphical representation or a pictorial representation based on the number, the number of the organisms, their total dry weight, and the energy that is being transferred, or the energy that each organism carries. So that's what we call an ecological pyramid. You will see examples as we move on. Then the ecological pyramid does not include decomposers. Why? We don't put decomposers in the ecological pyramid because their number is so large. Take example, for instance, bacteria. The bacteria that comes to decompose the last member of the food chain. Let's say a snake. You know, you will find millions of bacteria, of fungi, working on that. So, you, because it's too large, you can't put their number in the ecological pyramid. Then their weight is too small. You know, I mentioned that in the ecological pyramid, we put into consideration the number of the organism, their dry weight, then the energy. So, their weight, the weight of microorganisms, you know, 
we have microorganisms all around and they are as good as having no weights when you compare them to the things you can see with your eyes. So their waste is so ins insignificant that that accounts for the reason why we don't put them in the ecological pyramid. So have it at the back of your mind that the composers don't find their way in the ecological pyramid because of their large number and their very, very small weights. Then the food chain relationships can be represented in pyramid form, like a triangle. That's what pyramid is like. It looks like a triangle. So we can rep rep represent the food chain relationship in a pyramid form. Like the examples that I showed you earlier, we can represent them in another form of pyramid. And that is what we call the ecological pyramid. Then we have three kinds of pyramid. We have the pyramid of numbers, the pyramid of energy, and the pyramid of biomass. You know, I said ecological pyramid is the representation, the graphical representation of organisms based on their number, their total dry waste and energy. So based on number, you have pyramid of number. Based on their dry waste, you have pyramid of biomass, then energy pyramid based on their energy. By pyramid of numbers. Pyramid of number give an idea of the number of individual organisms in a trophic level. So you are able to say, okay, in this particular food chain, we have 50 goats that ate 1,000 plants, or let's say 1,000 water leaves. 